Welcome to the Bison Jacket Measurement Tutorial video. My name is Robert Lackey, I'm the co-founder of Bison, and today I'm going to help walk you through this simple process. The first thing I want you to do is go to our website, bisontrack.com. Open the menu at the top, click on Measurement Central, and about halfway down that page you're going to see the custom jacket intake form. When you open that link, you'll be taken here. We're going to get some basic information from you, but this is where you're going to record your measurements step by step. At the end, when you hit submit, all these numbers come to us. No need to write anything down and email it to us. Very simple. The next thing I want you to do is open and study the measurement diagram. This is a PDF that can be found at bisontrack.com in the Measurement Central, or if you've already ordered, it will be in your email. Now, as you can see, this form has full body measurements on it. We're only taking the top half numbers for the jacket measurements, so each of these numbers will correspond with the number on your intake form. Now, I want you to relax here. If you watch this video and you let us help, you're gonna do a great job. Don't stress out about this, don't overcomplicate it. Just chill and have some fun. Now, just some overall tips and notes here. First thing, we're measuring in centimeters, not inches. Don't try to measure in inches and convert it. It always goes south. The next thing I want you to remember is we are measuring in half centimeter increments. So if you're between 30 and 31, go 30.5. And of course, once again, don't stress, don't overthink this, but don't be afraid to remeasure two or three times if you need to. Now before we get started, I want you to think about what you're going to plan to wear under your jacket. Are you gonna wear a t-shirt? Do you wanna stack a hoodie under here? I want you to wear a hoodie if you're planning on layering, for instance. So just keep that in mind. Now let's go ahead and get started. Measurement number one, the neck circumference. This one's super simple. Obviously, as you can see on the diagram, and as you can see here with Carter, just simple, right around the base of the neck, not too tight. Measurement number two is going to be the base of your neck down to the shoulder. And what we do here is we place the end of the tape at the collar, and then we go down to the point where your shoulder drops off. You can usually feel this on the person. Now I'm gonna show you a different angle here, you can see that on Carter, he's pretty bony, he's pretty scrawny. I can feel where his shoulder drops off, but it's usually right around the seam on your t-shirt. So that's going to be measurement number two. The next few measurements are torso circumferences. So have the wearer lift their arms up, pull the tape around them and bring it to the front. Now, one key element to keep in mind while doing these next three measurements is you want the tape to be level front to back. If it droops down, that can skew the measurements. Once the tape is level and it's pulled taut, record right at nipple level across the front of the torso. For measurement number four, we're just going to move down below the bust. So right in the middle of the torso, which is usually the smallest point on everybody. And again, make sure the tape is level front to back. You also wanna make sure that the wearer is not abnormally breathing, not holding their breath, not sucking in their gut, nothing like that. It helps to talk during this process because that puts your posture at a natural point. Measurement number five, we're just moving right down. We're going to go navel level. So have the wearer point to their navel and then put the tape at that point. Again, make sure the tape is level front to back and record this, no sucking in, no holding breath. Now we're gonna to jump to measurement number 12 on the form. You're gonna see this on the diagram. This is measurement number 12. So we've skipped all those lower body steps. What I want you to do is find that point on the shoulder where it dropped off and we're going to measure the overall length of the wearer's arm down to their side. So you can see here, I place the tape at that point on Carter's shoulder. I run it down to his elbow, which kind of curves to the back of his arm, and then I go straight down to his wrist bone. So we're going shoulder, down to the wrist bone, right down the length of the arm. Measurement 13 is a critical one. Collar to the navel. Now what I do here, because different shirt collars fit in different places, I use the dimple at the top of the sternum. So you can see I place my finger there, I run the tape down, and I have the wearer point to the navel. It's very important here that you keep the chin up, you look straight ahead, and you stand up straight. If you slouch down or if the wearer looks down at what you're doing, it will change this measurement one to two centimeters. The next thing I want you to do is take a reference measurement. We're going to measure from the navel down to the floor. Now, keep that number in mind. You don't need to record it. Have the wearer turn around, and we're gonna measure from the floor up to the navel on the back. So that same level on the back. What this is going to tell us is where the navel point is on this person right on their back. Hold that point, and we're gonna measure from the collar down to the navel point on their back. Now again, collar points change based on the shirt or the garment that they're wearing. So with the chin up, straight ahead, standing straight, 
We want to find the bone at the base of their neck. That's what I use for a reference point, and it tends to be more accurate than using a collar, which can change depending on the garment. Measurement 15 is shoulder to shoulder, and we're going to use that point where we feel the shoulder drop off. So on both sides, find those little notches above the wearer's shoulder, run the tape across the back of their neck like this, so it arches, and go shoulder to shoulder. On measurement number 16, we're going to measure the bicep, but we're going to have them flex. And you wanna go around the widest point of the bicep. It's pretty simple. Now there's two elbow measurements. You'll see that on your measurement form. The first one's going to be taken straight. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Go right around the middle of the elbow, not too tight, while they have it straight. For the next one, just have them bend the elbow. And it doesn't have to be bent completely. I mean, you don't want it pushing the tape out, but like a 90 degree is okay, and even a little bit less. This is not a critical measurement. It's kind of a backstop, but we like to have it. Measurement 18 is a forearm. And what we want to do here is have the wearer pump their fist with their arm extended like this and kind of pump up the forearm. And you can see here I'm taking multiple measurements on Carter because I want to find the widest point of his forearm. Once I find the widest point, that's what I record. Measurement number 19 is super simple, just right around the wrist bones. Measurement 30 on the form. This is the last measurement on the form, and it's the last one we're going to take for jacket. That is the armhole. So you wanna run the tape through the armpit, straight up over the top of the shoulder, straight up above the armpit, and record that armhole distance. Now we have some women-only measurements. Guys, you can go ahead and skip ahead in this video if you need to, but these women's only measurements, there's three of them. The first one is taken right up in the armpit above the bust. Measurement number two, is centering the bust. And we're measuring nipple to nipple. So have the wearer point to the center of their bust, measure that. And then we're going to measure from the top of the shoulder at the base of the neck down to the nipple or center of bust. So again, just taking that tape, what we're doing here is we're making sure that the bust is centered so when we cut the jacket, it can be made appropriately. At this point, you're probably wondering, what's next? What do I do now? The measurements are done. Well, if you haven't yet, go to bisontrack.com and place your order. Once you do that, you're going to get some emails. In those emails, you'll be able to do two different things. One, schedule your measurement video call with your gear customization specialist. That's going to get you a fitment guarantee. If we help you on a video call, you get a fitment guarantee. The second thing is you can fill out your custom design profile. There's a link in those emails. You open that custom design profile, fill out that information and get ready to have some fun because you're going to be assigned to GCS and we're gonna design the jacket of your dreams. Thank you for taking the time to go through this process. I wanna be the first to welcome you to the herd.